Good day everyone. While solving uh, linear dynamical systems, you have come across points where you had to solve uh, separable differential systems regarding them as separable differential equations of the first order. So here is a little effort to help you identify separable equations and make you recall uh, how to solve separable equations considering x and y as uh, different variables and integrate them independently with respect to x and with respect to y considering one side as a function of x and the other side as a function of y. What exactly do we mean by a separable DE? We know the general form of the first order differential equation with independent variable x is dy dx equals f of xy. When f of xy is nonlinear in the dependent variable y, Finding an analytic solution y equals phi of x in terms of elementary functions is not generally possible. However, there are certain types of functions f of x, y for which specific methods will give us a solution. The simplest of these is when f is a product of two functions, one of x and one of y, and the de can be rewritten as dy dx equals g of x times h of y. Such de's are called separable because the dependence of f on x and y can be separated. We just divide by h of y. That gives us a form where we have 1 over h of y times dy dx equals g of x, and we can rewrite that as minus g of x plus 1 over h of y times dy dx equals 0. This is generally written as m of x plus n of y dy dx equals zero, where we define m and n in the obvious fashion. Note that this will only be possible for values of y for which h of y is non-zero, so there is always a possibility of missing a solution here or there. We'll see that you have to be careful about that. Once a DE is in separated form, it can be integrated directly, namely, the integral of m of x dx plus the integral of n of y dy dx dx will be equal to the integral of 0 dx, or a constant. And if we use the change of variable theorem, familiar to you from first year calculus, we know that the integral of n of y dy dx with respect to x is simply the integral of n of y dy. And so we see that our solution also appears in a separated form, a function of x, which is the integral of m, and a function of y, which is the integral of n. Often this process is written in a much more informal way. Namely, we write n of y dy dx equals minus m of x. Essentially what you do is you multiply both sides of that equation by dx, and you recall that the differential of a function y of x is written as dy and defined to be dy dx times dx. And so the equation ends up being rewritten as n of y dy equals minus m of x dx, which of course gives back exactly the same form of the solution as we obtained above. If we give names to these antiderivatives, then the integral of m of x dx being h1 of x and the integral of n of y dy being h2 of y gives an implicit solution h1 of x plus h2 of y equals the constant c which we labeled the integral of zero. This is a family of curves in general and will give us implicit solutions which are geometrically referred to as integral curves of the differential equation, which we may or may not be able to solve algebraically for an explicit solution, y equals phi of x, in terms of elementary functions. For example, if you had something like e to the y plus sine y plus x squared equals c, it would not be possible to, quote, solve for y and get it explicitly in terms of x. Here we have some problems in which we decide whether the given problem is separable or not. We do not have to solve them. We just will decide if they are separable and can be written in the form 
mx dx equals ny dy which means that if we can split our dy by dx with dy with functions of y on one side and dx with functions of x on the other side so um, let's consider about the first case uh, where we have tan y times dy dx equals x plus 2xy squared we know that on the right hand side x is a linear factor that can be factored out leaving 1 plus 2y squared inside the bracket now please grab a pen and paper and do exactly what i'm saying so that you can verify every word of me so the right hand side will be a product of x and 1 plus 2y squared which are two different functions x is completely a function of x and 1 plus 2y squared is uh, wholly a function of y so 1 plus 2y squared can be brought on the left hand side no matter it is in the numerator or in the denominator as long as it is a function of y and it can be separated from x and can be written with dy it does the job and similarly dx can be written on the right hand side with x to make the right hand side completely a function of x so we can say that this equation is definitely separable for the second case you have um, 2x plus y in one term with x and y both present in one term so uh, and they are multiplied with dy by dx so no matter if you split out dy and dx 2x plus y will be multiplied with both and this is the only problematic factor that will make it non-separable the right hand side is completely a function of x so it's, it's not a problem in the third case the right hand side is completely a function of y and there is no other function of x involved so we can separate um, and we can in integrate 5y squared on the left hand side with dy um, no matter if, if it comes in the denominator and dx can stay alone on the right hand side so it is separable in the fourth case uh, 12 is a constant and can be taken over to the right hand side making 5 over x minus 12 completely a function of x so we can uh, also move dx with this function of x and dy can stay alone on the left side so this is separable in the next problem square root of x y can be splitted as square root of x times square root of y by the law and so uh, square root of y will be um, solely a function of y and can be moved with dy and square root of x can stay with dx making it separable in the last case we again have a factor y plus x which is dividing x squared so no matter if you separate y and x you won't be able to isolate y or x as single whole functions so this is not possible and it is not separable Next, let's look at several examples of solving separable DEs. The method that we use was developed by Leibniz in 1691. The first example that we'll look at, example 2.7.1, is the DE dy dx equals minus x over y. We'd like to find the solution with initial condition y of 0 equals 2, and determine the domain of this solution. First, we write the DE in the separated form y dy dx equals minus x, or if you prefer, x plus y dy dx equals zero. Next, we integrate with respect to x and apply the change of variable theorem, or you can think of it as using the chain rule. The integral of x dx plus the integral of y dy dx dx equals the integral of zero gives us changing the integral of y dy dx with respect to x into the integral of y dy. We have an expression x squared over 2 plus y squared over 2 equals a constant. Since x squared plus y squared is always non-negative for real x and y, we can let the constant 2c be equal to a squared and write the solutions as x squared plus y squared equals a squared, which of course you will recognize as a family of circles concentric about the origin with radius a. 
These are called the integral curves of the DE. But we want a solution with initial condition y of 0 equal to 2. And substitution into the solution then gives that 4 is equal to a squared. That is to say, an implicit solution which satisfies our initial condition is the integral curve x squared plus y squared equals 4. This is shown in figure 2.7.1a. However, a solution of the initial value problem dy dx equals minus x over y with y of 0 equal 2 must be a differentiable function y equals phi of x satisfying both the de and the initial condition and defined on some interval containing that initial point x equals 0. Clearly our integral curve doesn't satisfy that criterion because in fact there are two places where the derivative is not defined at 2 and minus 2, where the tangent goes vertical, plus there are actually two functions defined by our integral curve. Solving the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4, we see that there are two possible explicit solutions, y equals plus or minus the root of 4 minus x squared. Choosing the one that satisfies y of 0 equals 2, we elect the upper half, the positive y, since y of 0 equal 2 is a positive y, and we have that y equals phi of x equals root 4 minus x squared is our desired explicit solution function. Notice that even though that function is well defined for the closed interval minus 2 to 2, the derivative, alas, is, as mentioned earlier, not defined at 2 and minus 2. The slope of the curve becomes infinite there to look at it geometrically. And so our solution's domain is the interval minus 2 less than x less than 2. So in conclusion, the solution of the initial value problem dy dx equals minus x over y with y of 0 equal to 2 is the differentiable function y equal phi of x equal root 4 minus x squared, and its domain is the open interval minus 2 less than x less than 2. Example 2.7.1 shows us that integral curves may include points where dy dx is undefined. If these are points where the derivative is infinite, then the integral curve will have a vertical tangent, and the curve has two options if you want to think of it that way. Either it will reverse direction, as it did with x squared plus y squared equals a squared at plus or minus a and 0, or it could continue in the same x direction, for instance, like the curve y cubed minus x equals c at the point minus c and 0. Try and sketch that to figure out how that works. It's essentially y equals x to the one-third plus a constant. Since an explicit solution y equals phi of x has to be differentiable, such points on an integral curve will separate it into distinct explicit solutions. That is to say, a continuous integral curve may contain more than one explicit solution. That is, it may consist of several explicit solutions linked at points where the derivative becomes infinite and it has a vertical tangent. Here's something to think about. If you look at the diagram in figure 2.7.2, you'll see the integral curves of a DE y prime equals x squared over y squared minus 1. So there's a clue there that when y is plus or minus 1, dy dx is going to become infinite. Take a look at the illustration and decide how many explicit solutions each of these integral curves contains. For instance, could an explicit solution pass through a point x0 and 1? Now let's look at the idea of equilibrium solutions of a separable DE. We've seen that to separate the variables we have to divide through by h of y. 
So if there are points y equal to y sub e, where h of y sub e is equal to zero, we clearly can't do that. Such points give us constant solutions, y equals y sub e to the dE. Since a horizontal line, y equals y sub e, clearly has dy dx equal to zero, and h of y sub e equals zero makes the right-hand side of that dE zero. And so they're solutions, but they're solutions that are constant. And they're called, as I said, equilibrium solutions. They represent states in which the physical system is in a constant or equilibrium state. We have seen such equilibrium solutions in some of the linear systems that we studied earlier in Module 2. An example of a separable DE with equilibrium solutions is dy dx equal to y times 1 minus y, which has equilibrium solutions y sub e equal to 0 and y sub e equal to 1. When solving a separable DE, this means that we have to always start by finding any equilibrium solutions because they're excluded by the separation process in which we divided through by h of y. In example 2.7.2, we look at a DE which has an equilibrium solution, and we'll find its integral curves. Since the function xy over 1 plus y squared is equal to 0 for y equals 0, we see that the DE has an equilibrium solution y equals 0 for all x. There are no other such values because 1 plus y squared to the negative 1 is positive for all y. Separating the variables, we have 1 plus y squared over y dy dx equals x, which integrates easily. We have the integral of 1 over y, which gives us ln of the absolute value of y, plus the integral of y squared over y, which is just y, and that integrates to y squared over 2, and the right-hand side integrates to x squared over 2, plus the arbitrary constant. Notice that, in this case, we have the situation where it's not possible to isolate y algebraically and find explicit solutions. More often than not, that's exactly what will happen with implicit solutions or integral curves of a given separable DE. We've plotted several integral curves of this DE in figure 2.7.2. The interesting thing here is that each value of C gives us two explicit solutions, one positive and one negative. This, of course, reflects the symmetry in the integral curves ln of absolute value of y plus a half y squared equals plus a half x squared plus c, in which we see that substituting y for negative y doesn't change the equation, and so there will always be these two curves symmetrically located above and below the x-axis. Notice that it appears that integral curves may include points where dy dx is undefined. If these are points where the derivative is infinite, then the integral curve will have a vertical tangent, and the curve has two options if you want to think of it that way. Either it will reverse direction, as it did with x squared plus y squared equals a squared at plus or minus a and zero, or it could continue in the same x direction, for instance, like the curve y cubed minus x equals c at the point minus c and 0. Try and sketch that to figure out how that works. It's essentially y equals x to the one-third plus a constant. Since an explicit solution y equals phi of x has to be differentiable, such points on an integral curve will separate it into distinct explicit solutions. That is to say, a continuous integral curve may contain more than one explicit solution. That is, it may consist of several explicit solutions linked at points where the derivative becomes infinite and it has a vertical tangent. Here's something to think about. If you look at the diagram in figure 2.7.2, you'll see the integral curves of a DE y prime equals x squared over y squared minus 1. So there's a clue there that when y is plus or minus 1, 
dy dx is going to become infinite. Take a look at the illustration and decide how many explicit solutions each of these integral curves contains. We will now attempt to solve the differential equation dy by dx equals minus y on 2 root x, which is a first order differential equation. First of all, we see that uh, this equation is separable and it has a trivial solution y equal to 0 because if you insert y equal to 0 on both sides of the equation, it will be satisfied. So uh, y equal to 0 is a solution and the next thing is to separate the variables as we did before and write dy and dx on two, two sides of an equation with the variable um, x and all its terms with dx and the variable y and all its terms with dy. In this way, um, the term with dx, let's call it mx, is 1 on 2 root x and the term with dy would be a function of y, we call it n of y and it is uh, minus 1 over y. And both of these functions of x and y, they are continuous functions within the domain uh, where x is uh, strictly positive and the absolute value of y is also strictly positive, uh, which is there in general, but we have to mention it to, uh, to remember and make sure that we have covered everything. So uh, solving equation, uh, equation one, we note that uh, the solution should be uh, root x plus log of absolute value of root y equals c and uh, this means that y uh, must be equal to e to the c minus root of x and this is the absolute value of y which means that y could be either plus or minus e to the c times e to the minus root x and e to the c itself is a constant let's call it k so that y uh, can be written as k times e to the minus root x, which is the solution to the original equation. Figure 2.7.4 shows solutions through several points x0, y0 in the set S on which x is greater than zero. The intriguing aspect in this example is that the functions y equals k e to the negative root x, the family of solutions, each have value k at x equals zero. So the solution functions are defined at x equal to zero. But to extend the solutions to x equals zero, which would go outside the bounds on which the original separated DE was defined, what we would have to do is show that the functions are differentiable at x equals zero. Since we can only consider values x greater than zero, we examine the derivative as x approaches zero positively. The derivative of those solution functions is negative k over 2 root x times e to the negative root x by the chain rule. And we see that that approaches plus or minus infinity as x goes to zero because as x goes to zero, e to the negative root x goes to one, but the denominator goes to infinity. The sign of the infinity in the limit will depend on k. This means, of course, that our set of solution functions has infinite slope at x equals zero. So even though the functions are defined, we can't extend the solutions to x equals zero because they're not differentiable there. Note that this is predicted by the DE itself since its original form was dy dx equals negative y over 2 root x. In this DE, dy dx is clearly undefined at x equals zero. So we conclude that the set of points x0, y0 through which solutions exist is all points for which x0 is positive and y0 is any real number. Keep in mind that we can include y equals zero because it's the equilibrium state of the system. The take it with you problem involves an interesting DE with two equilibrium solutions. Much of its behavior can be determined using the hint alone. 
Take a look at it and see what you can do with it.